All, All right, right, Senior Global Technologist Anthony Spatiri. All right, thank you very much, guys. What I'm going to do is first look at the Scala Backer Repository. And for those that you know, are new to Veeam or have just started, which are obviously quite a few, in our Scala Backup Repository, when we go to configure it, we can go in here and see that we've got that performance tier, which Antoine mentioned is that, you know, that local copy, that performance. And then we've got the capacity tier. And this is where you actually extend it to that object storage repository or the capacity tier. Now, importantly here in Update 4, we did have the move mode. So you guys have all seen that. And you know, just as a bit of a you know, retrospect on that, the move mode was all about taking data from what was more expensive storage to more cheaper storage, right? That's exactly why it existed, to increase the efficiency of that performance tier. Now with the copy mode, we're actually solving a problem. Because with that move mode, like Anton mentioned, there was a period of time where your data was at risk, OK? If you had a disaster inside of that operational restore window, there was a potential that you could have lost a little bit of your backups, OK? It was only the data outside of the window that actually moved to the object storage. With the copy mode, we're basically implementing a 3 2, one rule of backup with that. Like Anton said, immediately as the jobs are running, as they're creating the data on the performance tier, they're being copied, almost replicated across. 3 2, one rule, very important. So copy mode is actually really cool. And obviously, like Anton said as well, they work together, working with the archive index to be efficient, which again, it's differentiated when we're talking about this feature compared to others in the industry. Now what I want to do is take a look at the actual jobs. And you can see here that I've got a job configured with the US, and there's a couple of VMs in there. Okay? Now that is actually targeting that Scala backup repository that I showed you. With regards to immutability, that has been set. Okay, so if I go back here now and I click on backup repositories, and we can see that we've got these uh, object storage repositories, the one in the US, if I right click on that, click on properties, we're going to see exactly where we configure immutability. So let me click on next and go next here. And what we're going to see here is this, make recent backups immutable for X amount of days. That's the flag that we know. So then when backups hit this repository, using the object lock, targeting that object storage repository that we've configured, it's going to lock those objects for X amount of days. Okay? And it's all about the newest backups. Okay, that's very important to understand. Any of those newest backups, they're locked if this is configured. Now, what happens when it's actually in play? Malicious user, if I'm a backup admin, and say it's my first day, and I don't really know much about Veeam. I come in, I look at this object storage tab here. I go, OK, let's have a look here. Let me go and delete from disk because I'm a bit of a dodgy admin. So I'm going to go, go review. Let's go. And at this point, I'm thinking I might need to get a resume going because actually what I've done is actually deleted these backup points. But what's going to happen here is because we've marked these as immutable, it's actually going to come and say success, yes. However, the backup storage has data that is immutable, not deletable. Okay? Now, this is important as well from the point of view if you think about malicious users with malicious intent. Because effectively, if someone gets access to maybe an AWS account or even direct access here, even the root admin of AWS cannot delete these immutable objects. Now, if we look at a bit more, oh, um, it, just wait. live demos, right? Sorry, guys, hold on a sec. Uh, yeah. Actually, this was intentional. <laughs> well, you uh, laugh Annie. at that, but it was intentional Good because luck. now we have to continue the presentation from your yeah. laptop, right? Yes. Yeah, sorry, guys. That actually, to be fair, <laughs> was a bit of a setup. But what it's going to do, and we just wanted to have a bit of fun, you know. Um, not my heart is still racing, but it's because I'm up here. Anyway. What we're going to do, this is a scenario, right? So say, for example, that I was that backup admin. I've lost access to my data center. I can't get to it. Now I've got to execute some sort of recoverability plan. And that recoverability plan includes the fact that I've got data sitting on that object storage repository. So now what you're going to see here, this is actually this local laptop. Okay? On the local laptop, I've got VBR02. I've got an ESXi server. And what I'm going to actually do, I'll just maximize that. This is community edition as well. Very important. Understand the community edition is still so powerful. So as, my, as an admin, I've come in, I've quickly put Veeam and installed this as community edition, which is free. And what I'm actually going to go and do is take a look at the backup infrastructure. And you can see that it's a clean installation. And in fact, if I look on the jobs and I see the uh, data and the points, there's no points here, OK? What I'm going to actually do is I know that if I create that object storage repository exactly as it was, on my on-premises scene before this disaster, I can do some really cool thing with a feature called mount, object storage mount. So what I'm going to go through here is actually run this PowerShell command, which is basically going to go in and do what I'm going to show you 
actually in real life here. So to set this object storage repository, we're going to go set the object storage repository, choose Amazon S3, we'll give it a name. And very important here when we're looking to do the recoverability with this instant uh, mount is to keep the same credentials, the same region, and whatnot. Okay? Now, I'm not going to continue with that, but suffice to say, no matter what method you use, it's really easy to get this set up. So in the background, we should have this repository here. Now what we do, and this is the really magic source of V10, we've got an option here to import the backups. So what this is actually going to go and do, you can tell it's going to actually look at the metadata in that object storage repository that we've recreated. It's exactly like the on-premises one. We're going to read the metadata, and we're going to start to interpret what restore points are there. So once I click on Yes, it's going to start that process. It's going to go to Amazon S3. It's going to start to interrogate the bucket and get the information. And this is going to take about 1 minute 40 to 1.50. But Anton, just talk to me about, because I thought we did this in update 4, so what's different in V10? Yeah, and uh, to start, I also wanted to stress the scenario, right? So the guy, data center admin, left home with his notebook. And you know, three hours later, somebody calls, calls him that the entire data center is lost. Like, not a single rack left. Flood, fire, you know, things happen. So what does he do now? He only has, from his entire IT infrastructure, he has a single laptop. He downloaded Community Edition. He connected to uh, the object storage, which has most recent copies of backups of all VMs, uh, all physical computers, whatever, of his data center, right? And as a next step, basically, we'll do the recovery. And to make it interesting, again, and fair, because remember, I just said we lost the entire data center. We actually do the recovery into the public cloud, because we literally have no other uh, hardware to restore it to, right? And uh, the first step is, of course, to connect to the bucket and import those backups, right? Now, this is something we really put a lot of focus on in version 10, because surprisingly, that was the top question on update 4 for people who used object storage. You know, they kept asking, OK, so I have now those copies of my backups of loaded object storage. I know they're a few days old, right? But what if I need to restore for them still? Because, uh, you know, everything else is lost. And we had to guide them, you know, you could do it in update 4. You had to create scale out repository. You had to do this rescan and all that. You know, and experienced people could do it very easily, but we want to make it super easy. Uh, secretly, it's just because we got tired to answer this question on forums, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's ready now. Yeah. So yeah, so I think just to reiterate, this is really important because fundamentally what we've done with the copy mode is that we've reduced the RTO effectively of the data getting into the re uh, repository, and sorry, the RPO. The RTO is in this. Now that we've been able to set up a server so quickly, connect it to an object storage repository, get it ready to actually recover the data. That's the magic in this particular map. So let's go and have a look now and finish this off. Just to finish off the demo, if we go back home, you see that now we've got, this didn't appear previously, we've got object storage important. And if we have a look now here, you can see those machines that I had there on premises were available to me, and those were store points. So now if I wanted to go and right click, all that functionality that we know and love with Veeam is available. We can do an instant Veeam recovery. We can restore to EC2. Azure, everything is available. This is totally a portability message, simplicity and reliability. But for me, it's a complete differentiator and one of the top new features in V10. And in all cases, uh, when we do the restore on-prem, the data will be streamed directly from all storage. Through. It's very different. Many, many uh, competitors, they require that the data is staged back to the on-prem appliance or some on-prem storage before they can actually launch all these restores. Excellent. We can do instant recovery directly from Straight from the ESXi server yeah. locally. But what, what we're going to do instead. That's it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay.